So you want to become a data professional, but you don't have a college degree and you're not all that interested in getting one. And that's totally fine. Let's talk about what a realistic pathway looks like for you. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So for this one, I want to speak about my own experiences with college so that I get my own biases and perspectives out of the way up front. Now, I personally went to college myself in one of the top universities in the United States, and I got a master's there. So my bachelor's was in statistics and economics, and my master's was just in statistics. And for the overwhelming most part, the degree was quite useful and helped me learn many new ways to think through problems. And there's also no question that, especially in the early stages, it helped to build my career out to where it is today. Having said all of that though, I do have a number of criticisms. The first one being that I thought my program was way too theoretical. And yes, I know the theory is quite important and there's a lot of things in there that you need to understand. But at least when I experienced it, I think the balance could have been shifted quite a bit away from the theoretical and more towards the application. And the second critique being that college in general does sort of require you to take a number of classes which aren't necessarily aligned with where you want to go, but you have to go through these classes just to meet some kind of checking the box type of requirements. And that does bring me to some overall perceptions that I have of college as a whole. First and foremost being, I think being a degree holder is held in far higher esteem than it actually deserves. The degree itself and where you go to school are not guarantees of your professional success, nor of being super effective at your actual job. I know a number of people who came out of college and were quite frankly just a little bit arrogant with respect to their real capabilities. And particularly if you're going into your first job, you're just coming out of college, but you have no experience with that particular domain, it's going to be a long time before you're truly useful. And that's going to be true in general, honestly. College is not your entire learning experience. In fact, it's just the beginning of it. And while for a lot of people it is an absolutely wonderful tool, I absolutely do not think that it's the only way for everyone to become successful or capable. But it's also no secret whatsoever that there's plenty of jobs out there that are absolutely going to require a college degree, no questions asked. Having said that, that's not necessarily the best possible thing that all of them could be doing, in my opinion anyway. So now that I've said my piece on all of that, I'm going to talk about how many data science specific jobs really require degrees, whether I think that's necessarily going to be the case in the future, and then let's say for you, getting a degree, or at least an advanced degree isn't for you, what sorts of things can you be doing? Before I do that, just some usual asks. Number one, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Number two, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss an update. And then number three, I'll have a link to my Patreon account in the description of the video. If you guys would be willing to support me over there, it would be massively appreciated. So let's start off with data scientists and how many of them have degrees. This is taken from the Anaconda 2020 State of Data Science report. Now they did a massive global survey and they found that about 30% of respondents held a bachelor's degree, 36% held a master's degree, 19 or 20% had a PhD, and then the remaining 15% had no degree. That's most recent and very similar to other numbers that I've seen. Right off the bat, we do see about 45% of people or so have a bachelor's degree or less, if your goal anyway is just to avoid getting a graduate degree, so that's not totally terrible. I couldn't find any similar surveys to that for data analysts, but it's probably pretty fair to assume these proportions are pretty similar over there, just maybe with a slightly smaller percentage of people probably having advanced degrees. So now in the interest of fairness, I want to present arguments both for and against this trend continuing. That is, in the future, are more or less jobs going to require degrees? And then where it makes sense, we can make inferences about the job market as a whole and to data analysts and data scientists specifically. 
This is an article from CNBC making the case that the future of work won't be about degrees, but it'll be about skills. And that's just due to the proliferation of new and non-traditional education options. This is a perspective of somebody who's the leader of a tech company, mind you, and they list some companies that don't require a degree, and that includes tech giants like Apple, IBM, and Google. As I'm sure everybody is aware of, college is extremely expensive, it's growing more expensive, and we have a post-pandemic world to look forward to. And actually in the short term, that might manifest in a few fewer degree holders. In the fall of this year, it seems that undergraduate college enrollment was down about 2.5%, although it does need to be pointed out that community colleges were the ones that saw the largest dip in enrollment. So this might not necessarily represent completely the pool of degree holders who get into data analysis and data science. But as far as the dynamics of supply and demand of labor are concerned, we should at least think about this. On one hand, we have more alternatives to traditional education cropping up, we have more and more companies coming out saying they don't require degrees, and we have the cost of college rising to absolutely ridiculous levels. Then, of course, there's the current landscape that's being created by the pandemic. I'm assuming, for the most part, that most colleges are going to switch back to fully in-person classes as soon as possible, because honestly, people paying full price for online education is completely unsustainable. Either way, you put all these things together, and it is possible that the supply of degree holders could decrease in future years. I don't know that for sure by any means, but it's not impossible. Now the flip side to this is pretty obvious, especially when we remember the scenario prior to the pandemic. People would always joke that bachelor's degrees were becoming the new high school degrees, and that was broadly based on the trend of how many people were going to college compared to previous generations. And also, you have to take into account that data science has been and will continue to get increasingly complex. So as it requires more and more skills in order to be successful, it's just natural for a lot of people, one of the first lines of offense they think about in terms of how they're going to be able to tackle more difficult problems is college. Hopefully you do get the impression that while it's certainly challenging right now to get a data analyst or data scientist job without a degree, it's not 100% clear if in the future it's going to get harder or easier. I lean that it's probably going to get easier, but it's anybody's guess. Now let's move on to talk about things that you can actually do. And I'm going to break this down into skill sets that you should acquire, whether you have a degree or not, resources for building that knowledge, and then some resources for building some experience. So I've done a video on a study pathway for data scientists where I break down what the most important skills are to learn and in what order to learn them. And the first three are statistics, SQL, and one of R or Python. And I think all those things apply for data analysts as well, except for them, there is one major skill that I'm leaving out of that list, and that's Excel. I personally hate Excel with a passion, and if a data science job stresses it a whole lot, that's a major red flag. But at the same time, you can't deny that it is a big part of a lot of different companies' business and analytics stacks. So if you're a data scientist, and especially if you're a data analyst, please know Excel. You may or may not love it, but at least for right now, it's not going anywhere. All types of data professionals should be familiar with statistics to some capacity, and for that, it doesn't hurt to start with some good intro books. I highly recommend the book An Introduction to Statistical Learning. It's absolutely classic. And then it probably couldn't hurt to pick up the book The 100-Page Machine Learning Book either, even if machine learning methods are probably not priority number one for people just getting started. And while I think a lot of organizations out there are on to the game that a lot of people play of loading up on certifications, especially for people without college degrees, certifications are really going to come in handy. And that's where Coursera comes into play. 
One course with a pretty solid structure to it is the statistics with an R specialization. And then there's this other one on methods and statistics with a social sciences specialization. Now, whichever one of these things that you want to choose is totally up to you. It'll be based on time allocation and structure and all types of things like that. Obviously, I'll have links in the description. Next up, of course, is SQL. And so if you're going anywhere near the data space, whether that's to be an analyst or a data scientist, you are going to need to know your SQL. Now, when I was learning SQL for the first time, I learned it through w3schools.com. And I really love this site because it breaks things down into different sections. You can try out different examples, write some code, and see what output is produced. I'm also a huge fan of the book, The Guru's Guide to Transact SQL. And if you step through this whole book and run through all the examples, chances are you're going to run circles around people at your actual job that you work with in SQL. Then of course there's Coursera for your certification purposes too. Next, you do want to learn either R or Python. And for these, you want to learn your basic syntax and data structures, as well as some things like manipulating and visualizing data, creating statistical models, working with text, all that fun stuff. The same types of resources are going to apply here, meaning a good intro book is going to give you a great head start. The best intro books for these that I always recommend are R for Data Science by Hadley Wickham, or Python for Data Analysis by Wes McKinney. But something that I really want to take a moment to stress with these things, as well as basically with everything that you learn, is that wherever possible, you need to find opportunities to put what you've learned into practice and apply it. This is honestly probably the single best thing that you get out of college in the first place. It's the different project opportunities. So you do need to find some type of substitute for that. One of the best resources on the planet for this is the website Kaggle, which has tons of different competitions and public data sets. And I can tell you, many, many data scientists out there don't touch it, and they still get employed, whether or not they have a degree. So if you do a real type of analysis project here, it's something that is guaranteed to make you stand out. Now I want to wrap up and just say that, to be perfectly clear, I'm not in the business of disincentivizing college for anybody. To be perfectly fair, for a lot of people, it probably is the single best pathway towards getting that dream data analyst or data scientist job. However, once again, it's simply not an absolute requirement for everybody, and it's not the path that everybody wants to take. So whether you don't want to go to college, or maybe you already did, but you didn't really get anything out of it, hopefully now you have some solid food for thought, and you have some practical next steps that you can take, and good resources. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it, hit the like button if you haven't already, and then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.